Properly cooking a steak is something that could make or break a lot of friendships in your life. I'm just kidding, kind of. But I want you guys to have a lot of friends. So today, I'm gonna show you my favorite two foolproof and easy ways to cook steak that will always keep your friends coming back for more. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dishes and Fishes where I show you how to cook and set hooks. Perfectly cooking a steak is something that every cook should know how to do. And you're not gonna find any bang for your buck methods better than these two today, so let's get into it. So first, let's talk about steak. In my opinion, the best cut of steak is bone in ribeye. I know it may be a little bit fatty for some people, but this is just what I like the best. A New York strip steak would be fine too. I prefer large bone in steaks like this because I think you get a more juicy product. And when you buy steaks, you wanna make sure they have nice marbling, AKA intramuscular fat like the ones you see here. This fat is going to render during the cooking process and make your steak even juicier. The kicker is you need a thick steak for these recipes. I'm talking one and a half to two and a half inches. Yes, that's very big, but anything less than that, you're gonna wanna just sear in a pan and it's gonna be done in six, seven minutes anyway. The point of the two methods that I wanna show you today is that they yield something that I wanna call the prime rib effect. And what I mean by the prime rib effect is when the steaks are cooked this way, you are left with a nice edge to edge pink steak. It's warm in the center, it's juicy and it's consistently cooked the same way the whole way through. There's no raw spots near the bone. There's no gray band that you're sometimes left with when you sear a steak. These methods are only designed for large, thick steaks. Small steaks, just cook in a pan. So the first method that we're gonna go over is the reverse sear. So we're gonna start by putting our steak on a wire rack on a sheet tray, and we're going to generously season it on all sides with only salt. That's important here. Next, you're going to insert your leave-in thermometer in the top of the steak like this, and you're gonna pop that into the oven at 275 degrees for about one hour to an hour and 10 minutes until that steak reaches an internal temperature of about 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Once that steak hits 115 degrees, you're gonna take it out of the oven and you're gonna pat it dry on the side that you wanna sear first. After patting it dry, you're gonna give it a nice re-season and you're gonna start by searing the fat cap on the steak. You can trim this if you want to. I just prefer not to because I like having that fat to give me extra oil in the pan. After I have a little bit of that fat in the pan, I'm gonna put my steak in there and sear it really, really nice and hard. I'm also going to put a grill press on top to ensure I get a nice crust from edge to edge. You can leave the thermometer in at this point too, and you can just take the steak out whenever it reaches your desired level of doneness. You can see all of this fat in the pan, that is all just from the steak itself. After three to five minutes, I'm going to pat dry and re-season the other side, and you can see the amazing crust that this steak has. The thermometer got in the way here, so I removed it. And then I'm going to baste it in butter until it reaches the internal temperature that I so desire for my steak. I like medium, which is 135 degrees. Once it hits just below medium, I'll take it out, put it back on the wire rack, and then I'm going to dump all that fat in the pan over the steak as it rests. You can add herbs and garlic to your butter basting if you want to as well. I just didn't. Remember, we only use salt on that seasoning, so now we're going to finish this steak with black pepper, and that's the finished product. Crispy, buttery, delicious. This steak is unreal. The next method is smoked. So we're gonna start by using my favorite beef seasoning, Montreal steak seasoning, shout out Montreal. You can see these little chunks of garlic in the Montreal steak seasoning. This seasoning is interesting for this method because normally Montreal steak seasoning will burn if you use it in a pan and sear it. Grilling a steak with Montreal seasoning doesn't burn, it just produces a very delicious steak. So I'll take that steak out to my grill and I'm going to be using a cold smoker which I've used in numerous videos on my channel. So I'll fill my cold smoker with applewood chips light it with my blowtorch, and once those chips are lit, I'm going to blow them out so it produces this blue smoke, and that is going to add a nice flavor to my steak as it cooks. Same as before, I'm gonna start with the end cap on my grill, and then I'm gonna drop it onto the hot grill grates to get a nice sear on one side. Notice how the Montreal did not burn. After I get a nice sear on the opposite side, I'm going to drop that steak on the upper part of my grill, or you can use an indirect side of your grill if you don't have an upper part. I'm gonna turn the heat to low, close the lid, and I'm gonna let that steak slowly cook, and it's gonna take about 30 to 40 minutes while that cold smoker is rolling. And a lot of you are gonna say this is an indirect grill, you're probably right, but I'm just going to call it smoked for the video. There's no need to sear the steak once it reaches the temperature that you want to eat. Medium for me. You're going to take it off the grill, and again, we're going to finish it with butter. That is it. 
Now let's carve these steaks. So ribeye steaks are actually made up of different parts and this is how I like to cut them. So the top part of the ribeye is called the ribeye cap. This is the most desirable part of the ribeye steak. It is the most tender. It's small, but it is the most tender and delicious. In the middle, you have the actual rib eye, also delicious, but it has less intramuscular fat. It's less fatty. And this is the part that my wife requests when I make these steaks. On the bottom of the steak right here, we have what I call the chef's treat. This doesn't always make it to my guest's plate, depending on who's at my house. This part of the steak is comparable in tenderness to the ribeye cap. It's just very, very small. So the first thing that we're gonna do when we carve these steaks is remove the bone, which happens to be the other chef's treat. Now the bone of these steaks never makes it to the guest table. That is always reserved for the cook. So cut that off, dip into the side closet or the bathroom <laughs> and eat that thing. Enjoy it, you cooked it, you deserve it. This isn't quite as tender as a traditional smoked rib, but it's really, really good. Once the bone's removed, I'm going to remove the lower chef's treat and I'm gonna remove the fat. This happens to be a very fatty steak, so I'm gonna trim that fat off now and you can see fatty, tender, delicious, chef's treat number two, bye-bye. So now I'm left with the ribeye and the ribeye cap. The ribeye cap normally will come off without even a knife. You can just run your finger along it. Sorry if this is a little bit graphic. This is the smoke steak. I just wanted to show you the ribeye cap on this steak came off a lot easier. You'll notice I trimmed this one upside down for the camera and I actually cut a little bit of the ribeye into the ribeye cap. So I screwed this up a little tiny bit, but you can still learn from this. So on the left is my ribeye cap with a tiny bit of the ribeye attached to it. And on my right is the ribeye. And very simple, you're just gonna cut both of these against the grain. And that's how I like to serve these. So I like to serve the ribeye cap and the ribeye separately. If you have guests that prefer less fat, give them the ribeye. And here you can see what I mean by the prime rib effect. Uniform, warm pink center from edge to edge, juicy when you squeeze it. This is the true advantage of cooking thick steaks. You can also see how tender this pulls apart. It's the best of both worlds. Here's a look at those carved sections next to the bone. And that is ribeye steak cooking mastery. I get my steaks at Costco. I think they're the best quality. They're the thickest. They're consistently there, not sponsored. I just like them the best. If you learned something from this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons and I'll catch you in the next one.